I'm Denise Yamaguchi, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Agricultural Foundation. Before we start tonight's Eat, Think, Drink, I want to send a big mahalo to our sponsors, Alexander and Baldwin, Hyperbaric, Kamehameha Schools, Smith Works Vodka, the State of Hawaii, and the Ulupono Initiative. Thank you all for joining us tonight. The Hawaii Agricultural Foundation launched Eat, Think, Drink in November of 2016 in an effort to spark meaningful conversations about important agricultural and food issues facing our community and to build and engage a larger network of conscious and caring consumers like you. Tonight, we're gonna to learn all about high pressure processing, also known as HPP. It was one of, at one of our very first Eat, Think, Drink events in 2016, where we first learned of this technology from Lou Cooper House, who was president of Rutgers Innovation Center at the time, who spoke about how this technology could help Hawaii and small farmers. This is our 14th episode of Eat, Think, Drink, and we've partnered with Hyperbaric, the international leader in design, manufacturing, and marketing of HPP industrial equipment for food and beverages spanning across five continents. Although U.S. Food and beverage manufacturers have had HPP technology commercially available for more than 20 years. It is not currently available in Hawaii. HPP can provide many opportunities to diversify our agricultural industry and expand the sector of value added products made with local ingredients. Many local farmers and producers can benefit from this HPP technology. We're looking forward to an informative presentation tonight, which will be followed by a panel discussion and live audience Q&A. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them in the Q&A function. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight, Jorge Call, Business Development Executive of Hyperbaric. Thank you very much, Denise. Aloha. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Hyperbaric, I'd like to welcome you all to the event and thank you for your support and participation. A special thanks to the Hawaiian Agricultural Foundation and Senator De La Cruz for your continued support, uh, Mary Jane from Manaha, and of course, Lauren and Ethan, President of uh, Ulu Mana and Punahili Provision, respectively. And of course, to all local farmers, producers, manufacturers, and the business community supporting this event. My name is Jorge Cole, and I am part of the Hyperbury Commercial Department that serves the U.S. and Canada, and also South, Central America, and the Caribbean as well. Our main goal for today is to share with you, in a brief presentation, who we are, what we do, what the HTP technology is about, and how our equipment works, and more importantly, how many local farmers and producers can benefit from the HPP technology. The ultimate goal is to explore the benefits of having an HPP facility in the state and the opportunities to position Hawaii and Hawaiian-made products in a competitive market nationally and globally. The presentation will be showing some examples of products short uh, videos, and a general presentation about this technology. Who is Hyperbury? Who are we? Mm -hmm. Hyperbury is a worldwide leader manufacturing equipment with over 300 installations in five continents and over 40 countries. We are very proud of the reliability and durability of our equipment and the best wholesale service in the industry available 24 seven, meaning that our customers never talk to a machine, but always with a real person ready to help and support. We also provide food safety consultation through our in-house scientists authorities to support customer products and operation regarding validation studies, microorganism uh, inactivation, sharing previous case studies and the latest investigation to any specific product. I'm part of a growing team of 120 plus employees with 20 years of experience, with 60% market share, and with a very proud number on the research and development, with a little over 22 million since we started the company investing and reinvesting in new technologies. 
Where are we located? Our main office, our headquarters, is located in Spain. It's uh, in Burgos. It's two hours north of Madrid. We got also an office in Miami, Florida, where we at right now. And we got satellite offices and business representation in Mexico, Singapore, and Australia. What is the HPP technology? What is it about? HPP, or high pressure, pressure processing, is a tall pasteurization technique by which products already sealed in a final package are introduced in a vessel and subjected to a high level of isotopic pressure, like all the way up to 87,000 PSI transmitted by water, inactivated pathogens and microorganisms. How much pressure are we talking about? How much is a lot? Well, let's take a look at this. Pressure at sea level, as you can see at the beginning of the, the chart there, it's at 14 PSI. That's at sea level. If you go to the deepest point of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, the Pacific Ocean, almost seven miles deep, down there, the pressure goes up to 14,000 PSI. And guess what? In our equipment, every time we do a cycle, we do six times the pressure of the Mariana Trench fall all the way up to 87,000 PSI. That's a lot of pressure and that's a comparison for you to have an idea why and how the microorganisms get inactivated. Let me show you in a very short video, just a minute and a half, how the equipment works, how the product is loaded and unloaded, how the chamber gets full of water. And let me share with you this real quick. High pressure processing by hyperbaric. Traditional HPP machines process impact products, generally in their final commercial packaging, not introduced in the vessel. The vessel is aligned with the yoke and is filled with low pressure water. Then it is closed at both sides by plugs and wedges. HPP inactivates microorganisms without the use of heat being respectful with the characteristics of fresh food products. Finally, the depressurization of the vessel and the opening of the machine take only some seconds. Afterwards, processed products are unloaded. To know more about high pressure processing, Please visit us at hyperbaric.com. Thank you very much for watching the video. And then after the HPP processes, what happened there? What do we do this for? What's the benefits, the real benefits of the HPP technology? First and foremost, the inactivation of harmful microorganisms like salmonella, listeria, E. coli, Preventing the recontamination after the product has been packaged. That's one of the benefits of the HDP. Another one will be the clean label, preservative free and premium quality products. In order pasteurization additives are required here, there's no require because the technology kill or inactivate those microorganisms and preserving the nutritional characteristics and organoleptic uh, quality of the product. So that being said, it's all in one. Now, reduction of food waste, which is a big topic for a lot of food companies, not only through shell life extension, but also by processing products for other industries within the food chain, like animal, feed, or another products to be sent to this industry. In the case, for example, of the avocado industry, 
all these avocado that we kind of got left over when we're doing productions, we, we pack it, we process it through ACP, and then we can send it to any part of the, the, the food chain or the, or, the, or, or, the, or the food restaurant, and then we, that way we create or we put to the minimum the food waste. Preserve nutrients, and in general, the HPP accomplished the requirements of the strictest food safety agencies in the world. Now, what retailers think about HPP? What's their perception? It's also important to us, and also it was important for one of our biggest customers, Universal Pure, they put a survey together asking retailers their opinion on food safety, including HPP. On the right hand of the slide, you could see amazing numbers there, like for example, 85% of the retailers say that the company has been affected by consumer demand for more fresh food and beverage. So the fact that we're doing this, the consumer has the demand that we're meeting that demand with fresh products and with no addition of any preservative. Uh, the big number, 92% of retailers say the issue of food waste. So it's important, food waste is important or relevant for almost all food manufacturers and it's important to, to their companies. And 67% said that the use of HPP in their product meaning substantial growth along the way. This is the case of so many products that as soon as they have more shell life, they can go to some other markets and the quality of the product remains the same, the texture, the color, and that's why there's a growth there every time we submit a product under HDP. Relevant food safety, food quality, and food waste. Now, regarding HPP faction, there's a lot to talk about. I just put together one slide that can show you uh, what package it is about. It could be as simple as this PET trays with a film. A lot of customers using uh, this kind of trays. And also in this chart, you could see other uh, type of packaging like bottles. This is a regular 12 PET bottle that is uh, HPP compatible. And then there's some other customers that utilizing this type of containers. And we can go on and on some uh, these pre-packed films for the deli meats used uh, in the deli meat industry. And they were getting created with pouches for you know, baby foods and some other uh, product there. The good news about packaging that our in-house authorities can help you out, not only with the product you're trying to process, but also with the packaging. We got in contact with a lot of companies with the uh, packaging manufacturers, and sometimes we suggest what to do with the packaging to be able to get it through HPP, and it's included in the trials we do at our pilot test. Now, what is, what is the HPP product to be applied? Where am I included? Now, if you're looking at me somewhere, uh, during this presentation, the question that comes to yourself, is my product HPP compatible? And you can see across the chart, it can go from fruits and veggies, juices and beverages, pet food, seafood, uh, ready-to-eat meals, that is uh, one of the fastest growing categories, dairy, meat products, even pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries are starting to use this technology. But let's go a little deeper in those uh, applications or different categories that the HPP could be used. In the juicing industry, it's more than juices along the way. It, we talk about cold brew teas, uh, chart, fruit-based water, energy drinks, probiotic drinks. Now, if you're looking at this slide right now, you can say, well, where am I right now? What are the beverage categories that I can use the HPP technology for? And it's endless the amount of products that could be traded. One of the examples that we're bringing today, it's uh, one of our customers is the, the Starbucks group. 
uh, it's called evolution, they uh, tried to do something different since day one, and they decided to invest into HTTP technology. Then what they did, they all their product has been HTTP, and you can find this product in every Starbucks store around the country. Let me share a quick video that they posted recently where they made a difference point between what others are doing and what they were able to accomplish by using the HTTP technology. This is a, a quick video about what Evolution has done. And nowadays, they own like four, one of the biggest equipment, Hot Bird 420, and they process, those equipment are capable of processing around, all together, around 20,012 ounces bottle an hour. So next time you go to Starbucks and you see Evolution, you could, you could have an idea that it has been HPT. Now, another application would be the meat product. It's more than raw and marinated. It could be a ready-to-eat meal, poultry product, sausages, daily meat. Remember what we talked about, packaging daily meat? Another example of the daily meat is a Subway restaurant. They do not own an equipment, but all their daily meat has been processed HPP by a third party. So every time you go to Subway, that's why you get as fresh, good as possible because they open the HTTP product once you get there or at the time that they need it. Uh, another, uh, one of the biggest applications is avocado and avocado product, including guacamole. Guacamole really put a stamp on this technology around 10, 12 years ago. They started to process in the guacamole because what happened with the guacamole? After two, three, four days, well, you know what happened, right? And then with this technology, they've been able to extend the shell life for around 60 days, 70 days. And they were pioneers in the use of the technology, like the holy guacamole that started probably more than 10 years ago. Today, 95% of the entire guacamole market around the world has been processed HDP. And on top of the guacamole, the avocado industry gets bigger than that. Uh, they do avocado hats, salsa, dressings, avocado beverage, and avocado bread. Now, this is what we were talking about when we refer to food waste, but they be able to pack all that and resell it and re put it in the food industry so there's no food waste in this industry at all. Another one of the uh, biggest applications and unique application is a feed food product. On top of the fish salad, the octopus, the, the ready-to-eat meals that we can also do it in our equipment, that is also a unique application for seafood, which is the crustacean meat extraction and mollusk shocking. What happens at a lower pressure, you know, this meat extraction gets easier with a tenderness and the mollusk shocking that just opens up with ease and there's a lot of companies around the world using this technology to get this uh, work uh, done. Uh, and also we have salsa, fruit products, plant-based, dip, salad dressing, ready to eat, again, a uh, hummus around the, 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 the world engaged already in this technology. 
daily products to gain more than raw milk, he has the functional beverage, daily beverage, fresh cheese, spread, and all the cold brew coffees as well. Baby food is one of the, the, the biggest representation of what this technology can do with the packaging and product. The fruit and veggie cups, juices, smoothies, healthy snacks, a different type of uh, packaging that they have been developed, like the one I show you here for those uh, baby food companies. And this is another one of the application that is growing at a faster rate. Ready to eat meals not only started with the pandemic, but the increase of the ready to eat meals. It started like probably a year before the pandemic when the new generation and a lot of people try to eat healthy. They want healthy foods, they want complete meals, but they want fresh, they want no additives, and they want nutrition there. And all that you can find it after do the ready to eat meals through HPP. Pet food product is another fastest growing category there uh, and with the raw formulas. Uh, the, the FDA has some regulations and then they are all uh, getting into this uh, technology of HPP. They're moving from a dry food to raw formulas, including the raw meat bun, the raw fruit, a dry, and even our loved ones, our pets, are eating healthier today with raw. A, you know, in a secure way. Uh, but what happened here? What happened with our unique ingredients for Hawaii? If you take a look at that picture, and I'm sure you will identify some items that you own, some items that it's part of your culture, it's only there like taro, the Okinawan sweet potato, the ulu, also known as, as bread food, the sticks, the arrow roots. Think about it at this point. If you're looking at this presentation, this unique ingredient could be used in any of the applications that we talked before. We can do juices, we can do baby food, we can do hummus, we can do ready to eat meals, we can play around with flavors and taste and unique things from the island to send it to the world. They, right today, there are some entrepreneurs that decided to do something different, decided to come on board with the technology and put their name somewhere else, bigger and better. Now, this is a case study uh, in New Zealand that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the intention here is not really comparing one to the other one, but something happened in New Zealand, and definitely there are some similarities between New Zealand and Hawaii in terms of geographical situation, internal trade between islands, uh, uh, import and export regulation, etc. Uh, New Zealand started around 14, 15 years ago. In 2006, a company named Frontera, they started processing milk products and then they start calling, killing the service. And then in 2010, Fresher get on board and it's all history now. It started with the 55, and then you see in 2014 and 2020, the company Home Ground acquired two of the mid-sized equipment for, uh, for their juice product and keep calling and keep giving the service to third parties. And then I'm happy to announce today that the, uh, the latest equipment for New Zealand, it, it will be there probably less than a month. 2021, they just acquired uh, the equipment, and it will be a total of seven equipment in New Zealand. And this just started 14, 15 years ago. If we mirror that look of success, that's probably our intention to do in, in, in Hawaii with your own support. Other, uh, another uh, good news that happened in New Zealand, in 2012, uh, the government decided to fund it an open facility it operated nowadays but a, a trust a, a private trust but the government in, in invested 16 million dollars there in a place where all the local producers manufacturers and business persons can go there and interact with a high pressure processing machine other equipment with packaging 
Okay, they got help and support with certification, validation, etc. So you could see what happened in New Zealand, and I just put it there because we probably, hopefully, we can do the same somewhere else. And Hawaii, I think, is the best scenario to do that. Now, what can Happy Very can do for any entrepreneur that is thinking about it at this point? Well, we can help with free of charge or limited testing in our pilot plans. We can help and support with the packaging. We run the test. We suggest what to do with the packaging, with formulation, regulations. We got a team of uh, application team, a very talented group of people, including five PhD uh, in food safety and, and HTP that can sure can get you through the right path. And this is something like we offer along with the equipment and the technology. Now, I'm going to leave you with this. This is why probably it's very remarkable in things what we're trying to accomplish here, bringing HTP to Hawaiian local products, like the two of those you're uh, looking at on the picture, but my mind is said, and our mind, Hyperbaric, all together, what are we thinking is we're gonna be part of those blue arrows that you could see, like from Hawaii to the world, with a chill life extension that we can bring, the nutrients that we can keep, and all these benefits that we already talked about, we wanna be partner with you and be part of that blue arrows and selling products to Europe, US, Japan, and anywhere in the world, and put the name of, you know, made in Hawaii very high. And we're gonna be there for that, we're gonna partner, and any way that this comes up to a, a solution or a perfect solution for the island, it will be there. We got a group of unbelievable people here working together to, to give you all our knowledge and support. But before I leave, I want to do something. I want to show you how a real cycle could do in a real demo with the real machine in here in our facility in Miami. So could you please come with me here? Let me show you what an equipment can do in a real cycle. This is our pilot plan here in Miami, as I mentioned. We're ready for this. We're going to throw some a product there starting from the juices, and we got baby food, and we got, you know, dressings, and we got fruits here. They are all going to get inside there, and we're going to do a real cycle. Let's see how this works. We come here. And then you'll see the product coming in the machine. What happened inside there? You already saw that in the video. The chamber gets full of water, the pressure goes up, and this is what should be seen here, right? The vessel is going to play, the flops are going to get in, it starts flooding with water, and then in a little bit, you start listening to a sound the sound of the intensifier or the water pump pushing water and more water to that chamber where no more water is allowed. That's how we create the pressure. If you see the intensifier here, those are the sensors are indicating that they're active, that they're on, that they're pushing water and water. I'm sure you can hear that sound. It will take a little bit quick cycle here just for you to see how it works. So, from so this way, the machine is working, you can hear the sign. The intensifier is all the way back. They are sending water and pushing and pushing. So this is our smallest equipment. We have some more variety here. That's a 65, that's a 135, 300, 420, the 525, they all do the same. They just got different sizes and different structures, different products to them. But they all can get to 87,000 TFI max and get all the benefits that you just saw in the video. In short, you'll see a sound that indicates that the cycle is over, that the water pressure will be released out of the sudden, and the cattle will be coming out this way here. Even though you don't hear the sound, the pressure is in there, and they're working. 
you think it's fire are working there, right? You don't hear anything that the product is under that type of pressure. You will see, you will hear a sound there, the release of the pressure, reacting, and the product will be coming down. That's what we call the cycle. That's what all these people you see in the, in the presentation. That's the sound, and you will see in a few seconds the product coming out and another bass coming in on the other side, so we're ready for more and more. Uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation. This is the product coming out. And it's been a pleasure for myself and for the entire team in the Miami facility from HPC. Here we have the product coming out and we'll be ready to go. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you for your support. And thank you for the stage like today. It may be a game changer in the name of the, the state of our watch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jorge. Fascinating stuff. Now, as we move into our panel discussion, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Nelly James, co-founder of Mana Up. Thank you, Denise. And mahalo everyone for joining us this evening. So for those of you who don't know Mana Up, we're a Hawaii-based economic development initiative building the state's next generation of consumer brands and expanding them to markets worldwide. Mana Up's portfolio is 100% Hawaii-based companies who elevate the ingredients, culture, and people of our community. We run a six-month accelerator program that highlights the high-impact sales opportunities, tackles operational challenges, and develops executive leadership. We also have our House of Mana Up retail store, which is online and brick and mortar located in the heart of Waikiki that highlights the individual stories and products of our local makers and artisans. We strongly believe and agree with Jorge, this would be game changing for Hawaii. So let's get started and I'll introduce our panel now. First off, we have Hawaii State Senator Donovan Dela Cruz, who is with District 2. We also have Lauren Shoup, who is the owner and president of Ulumana and Ethan West, co-founder and president of Punahele Provisions. So I'd like to get started first um, with Senator De La Cruz. Um, you know, let's talk about the current situation in Hawaii. Um, from your perspective, how can our state benefit from such technology? Well, thanks for um, including me, uh, Denise and, and Mele. You know, this is a great opportunity for the state. We've been talking about diversifying agriculture We've been talking about diversifying our economy, um, help push more exports, bring in um, out-of-state dollars into the state. And this is really gonna be a breakthrough, I think, for, for many companies to be able to launch their product and scale up um, like they've never been before. You know, the opportunity to be able to export to Japan or to uh, the mainland or any other country because of this machine um, is really going to help them improve their sales. It's going to increase the visibility of, of, our, of our local products. And I guess this is one of the opportunities that came out of the, the current situation because of COVID. Uh, we were lucky enough, uh, the, the legislature was a, lucky enough to appropriate $15 million to DBED. So there's a lot of kudos that it goes out to DBED, CTAR, um, your organization, Department of Agriculture, ADC, who came together to make sure that we could purchase a HPP machine. Yes, absolutely. And you've been a huge proponent and supporter of agriculture here in the state. Um, so I know you've, you've mentioned um, a lot of pieces of this as to how this thing came about, but what was your role um, in getting HPP to Hawaii? Well, my role is probably, it's, it's, it's not as intense as maybe some of the other people involved like Leeward Community College or Department of Business Economic Development and Tourism. But as I mentioned, uh, because of the pandemic, unfortunately we had lots of a, a big, a huge shortfall. And there was some monies that we wanted to invest into economic development. So we provided $15 million to DBED. I think they, they earmarked about 4 million for this overall project. And they're partnering with Liberty Community College, like I mentioned, Department of Ag, ADC. 
just to be able to support our, our state departments to get this type of equipment was something that I think the legislature is par par proud to be a part of. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I know this as we are looking at diversifying our economy and this being an incredible way to start to increase exports and helping to bring Hawaii to the world. Um, this is this is this is truly game changing. So thank you, Senator, for joining us. No. This evening. And thank you for your advocacy, consistent, persistent <laughs> advocacy. <laughs> you and Denise, I, I, I can still hear you when when I'm looking at every value added product. So thank you, guys. Well, thank you. She's cracking up, too. Um, all right, great. So um, we're going to move on to the next uh, question. And so we've got Ethan and Lauren. So Ethan West with Punahele Provisions and Lauren Shoup from Ulumana, a mana up company. Um, can you guys share, um, and we'll start with Lauren, what are the benefits for local businesses who utilize our local agricultural products and the farmers who produce them? Lauren, we'll start with you first. Hey, um, so uh, what I think this can bring is um, a new category, a fresh Hawaiian brand category. Um, that we just don't have before. So over the years, you know, there's like crack seed, magnets, confections, but there's no fresh Hawaiian uh, products. I mean, people love the Hawaii brands, uh, they love Hawaii, and I'm sure they enjoy fresh Hawaiian products. Uh, so it just imagine fresh pineapple juice on the grocery stores of the mainland, fresh poi instead of three to six days, um, you're gonna have fresh poi over in the mainland. Um, so we all know, uh, you know, avocados from Mexico, but what about avocados from Hawaii? You know, I was born and raised on the Big Island and I'm a little biased, but I swear everything on the Big Island tastes better. And I, I really believe that avocados could compete as a premium product in the uh, California market or, you know, across the US. Um, so we can build that brand. So I think this is a huge opportunity uh, for local Hawaiian farmers uh, to do fresh Hawaiian products and create a new category and really do well. So you have your ulu hummus, correct? Yes, yep. And so yeah, how so, long is the shelf life of that now? Yeah, so that's a great example. So the shelf life now, um, all we use is citric acid, uh, which is a natural preservative, uh, but only lasts three weeks. And um, it just really doesn't work to reach other islands, let alone even outside of Hawaii. Um, so if we had this machine, that would let our hummus product um, go up to maybe two months, about 60 days. I mean, that's an absolute game changer that can let us go to outer islands, that can let us export uh, or sell to the mainland or export to other countries. And there's a lot of other brands like us, like Andy's Salsa. I mean, he would be able to extend his shelf life from three or four weeks to, again, 60 days. I mean, it's an absolute game changer for us. And that really being that even though three weeks sounds like a lot right now, getting it out of Hawaii, whether it be to the mainland or to other countries, just that transport time and that risk around you know having that shelf life is is really um really a it, big difference yeah it's it's crucial i mean we have a lot of food waste and we're we only have a three-week shelf life and it's a fresh product we actually have a lot of food waste even with local stores here on oahu um so we really need uh that extra shelf life uh to make it happen for uh exporting and to the mainland absolutely well thank you lauren ethan Thanks. um i'll repeat the question what are the benefits for local businesses who utilize our local agricultural products and the farmers who produce them ethan hey, you're up yeah absolutely so as Everybody on the call tonight knows we have some of the best ag land in the world, some of the best farmers and producers in the world. So in order to make sure that the taste, the color, the vitamins of all of these incredible Hawaii grown ingredients are maintained throughout the supply chain, we need to have the best processing in the world. And a lot of that can stop depending if you don't have HPP for cold pressed baby foods, you know different components that can help maintain a lot of nutritional integrity of the product. So if at Punahele Provisions, we want to be able to make the best baby food in the world, then we need the tools and technology and innovative spirit to be able to bring that to fruition. It's going to help out a lot on saving on food waste, on, on creating new products, on new outlets and categories, not just for the farmers, but for the businesses that are in the space. You know, Lauren mentioned avocados, and I might be a bit biased too, but 
just the fat content, the butteriness, oh, like Hawaii has so many avocados. It's going to open up so many category spaces for us to create an HPP guacamole to distribute throughout the state, for us to create alternative milks from, from macadamia nuts or any of these other incredible ingredients that we have. So the possibilities are endless. What we need is just the coming together of innovative entrepreneurs and dedicated farmers to keep doing what they're doing, which is growing incredible Hawaii grown products. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love what you said about this, you know, new entrepreneurs feeling like they have an opportunity to create even more products. So a lot of people who have a great idea, knowing we have the manufacturing and machinery here that they can take a new idea and a new product all the way and ultimately could become a huge, you know, food product that could be exported. I mean, that's, that's, that's really exciting just from that idea stage of people getting excited that they can go there, right? Dream a little dream and it could actually become reality. Absolutely. Great. You know, I was... And so for you, you have um, Punahele provisions of baby food. So what kinds of um, agricultural products are you using now? And I know HPP would be very huge for your company as well. What, what are some of the uh, ag products you're using in your food right now? Yeah, right now we've got three flavors. One having Okinawan sweet potato, banana, and taro. We've got kabocha, pineapple, and breadfruit. And then we've got spinach, green beans, banana, and pineapple. But it would also allow us to create like brand new products using like Hawaii grown mangoes. HPP can help maintain, say like the vitamin C content in a fresh mango. It's going to be on par almost with a fresh picked one instead of having to do a heat pasteurization method. Mm -hmm. So it'll allow us to create a super fresh nutritive product using our current ingredients, but then also open up so many more. Yeah, absolutely. And also just thinking about, um, as we all, as all these companies are headquartered here in the islands, you know, as you folks grow, so do our jobs, management level jobs, C-suite jobs, and all those great things that are super important as we diversify our economy and, and create economic impact. So thank you for joining us this evening, Ethan. I'm now going to open up the, uh, for our final question for the panel before we open it up, of course, to Q&A with the audience. Um, for all of our panelists, you know, what do we need? from community, industry, and government to bring this technology here so that our local products can compete in national and global markets. So I'll start with, uh, with Lauren. Yeah, so again, we're creating a fresh Hawaiian products category. Um, so what we're gonna need is hungry entrepreneurs like we've been talking about. This is a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs to think outside the box and create new products. Um, so we need them first. They can come from the Go Farm program, Ulu Mana, or uh, sorry, Mana Up, anything like that. So uh, the next thing we would need from industry or government would be um, a packaging specialist. So I know Jorge mentioned that they do that, but I think to really kick this up a gear and to know what's possible is a packaging specialist. So for example, I took a trip with HDD, uh, HDDC and Innovate Hawaii to Pack Expo up in Vegas, and that opened my eyes up to what's even possible with packaging. I had no idea what was out there. So I think if we had a, a packaging specialist to let us know like, hey, you can use this container for those trays or this and that, I think that would really open up to what's possible. And um, from the government, I really think we need time. I mean, we need time to figure this out. Um, that could, the time could come through subsidies, uh, grants, incentives, um, but we just need time to figure this out. But once we get rolling, it's just gonna be like New Zealand and we're just gonna be ordering a bunch of them. So um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought up New Zealand. I know Jorge did um, in his keynote. Um, you know, a lot of very, a lot of similarities that we do have with New Zealand. It seems that they've had a very much success in bringing HPP there. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, Ethan, why don't you go next? Ethan. Oh, he is. Okay. All right. Um, we'll have Senator De La Cruz um, go next, please. Senator, what are your thoughts? What do we need? Aloha Meli, it's Stacy Ferrara. I'm having to do a, a handoff <laughs> with Senator Dela Cruz. I'm so sorry. We Thank you so much, Stacy. You've been very integral in this whole process. So please go ahead. We, we are in the thick of the budget process, and he was pulled away to an emergency meeting. So he said, "Get in there and and take my." Place. So um, here I am. Uh, what I think he 
share with those that are watching is just the power of public-private partnership. I think this, um, this whole effort that we're talking about regarding the HPP is a great example when we put the, our best thinking from the public sector and the private sector together, and, um, and we use each other's uh, talents and skills and resources, really we can identify what are the most strategic um, and best use of our resources to really move the needle in agriculture. And so when we came together as a working group, you know, the HPP, thank you to Lauren and, and Melly for really bringing this opportunity to the forefront. This is not the, um, the public sector's expertise. You folks are on the front lines. You know what, what's needed. You know what's going to get your products um, out to the marketplace um, in the most effective and um, cost-effective way. And we need that, that, that feedback loop. And then where we have resources, you know, that's where the, this give and take can occur. And um, I think going forward, we're going to need this continued public-private um, partnership approaches because we're going to need to have somebody who has expertise in operating um, the HPP. Um, you folks are going to have the know-how and how to implement such equipment in the best way. Um, I know Senator Dela Cruz is very committed to ensuring that um, there's equal time and opportunity for small farmers and value add producers to be able to use this machine, that it's not going to be monopolized by the bigger companies. He wants everybody to have um, equal access to um, these types of resources. And as a state entity, that's, that's our role, is to make sure that one, we can provide resources, but to ensure that there's always going to be access. So um, I think going forward, if we can continue to have these opportunities to, to get together, to, to um, think about what it is that Hawaii needs, but more importantly is taking action. Not just talking about it, but actually pulling the trigger and figuring it out. We're not gonna have it all figured out 100%, but we have to take risks and we have to, we have to lean into it and just move. And I think HPP is a great example of that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Stacey. It really is about public-private partnerships, especially when we're looking at implementation and looking at building capacity. And that's what's so exciting about this talk this evening is getting the community involved so they yes. first know what HPP is, what it can do, and how do we engage to build capacity? We want to start utilizing this machine once it gets here and having no, no downtime. So thank you for joining us this evening. I think Ethan's able to join us again. Thank you, Stacey. Um, Ethan's back on. So Ethan, we've got about a minute left before we're wrapping up. So if you'd like to chime in here. Awesome. Thank you, Maui. Yeah, you know, uh, and thank you, Lauren and Stacey also for, for both of your points. Um, it's going to take a lot of time, patience and persistence from everybody that's involved. We really have an opportunity here to help establish Hawaii as a leader in innovation in the food and ag space. And HPP can certainly be a catalyst making sure that happens. And it's gonna require people from each one of those areas that were mentioned, whether it's entrepreneurs, businesses, university systems, government, we need to elevate up out of our individual silos and come together and say, how can we take this technology and this opportunity that we've been given to really accelerate our food production, our food systems resiliency and the spirit of innovation across the state, you know? So I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity, as you mentioned, and. Looking forward to the potential that this means for Hawaii. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Ethan. And thank you to our panelists, Senator De La Cruz, Stacy, Ethan, and Lauren for joining us this evening. We're now going to finish our panel discussion and open up for our audience questions. I know we have quite a few coming in, so we want to start getting through all of them. Um, so um, I'd also like to um, welcome back our Hyperbark team that is Jorge Call, uh, Business Development Executive, Vinicio Cerment Moreno, HPP Applications and Food Processing Specialist, and Anthony Zapata, who is the Marketing and Sales Specialist. All the Hyperbaric team is joining us again. They're on the East Coast, so we're excited that they're here with us after midnight, so thank you, gentlemen. Um, so our first question is for Vinicio. What happens to the food products on a cellular basis? How is it that cellular structure is unaffected by such high pressures so that there's no change to texture, flavors, color, or other physical characteristics? Sure, my pleasure. Uh, thank you again for the invitation and it will be my, uh, my pleasure to answer the, the question. So you can think about this in a very simple way as uh, people getting into a subway wagon at peak hour. 
So the people get in into the into the train, everybody starts to come in, and you just are basically tightly packed. There's no move to room to move around. And the same thing happens with the molecules under high pressure. So you are pushing an extra 15% water volume in order to raise the, the pressure volume. Molecules do not are tightly packed, they do not have any way to move around, but they still remain there. And as in people, when people come of the, the, the different train stations, you basically have more space to move around. And the same thing happens with the HP. You release the pressure, the system comes to the, its original volume, and molecules such as vitamins, uh, biochemical compounds of interest such as phenolics, they basically remain the, the same. And this is perceived by consumers. Uh, they just have uh, the same taste, uh, aromas, uh, different uh, nutritional sensory characteristics before and after the HPP. For larger molecules, it's a little bit more complex. Let's keep uh, also with the same example on, on the subway. This time, it's not only you, but a group of people, let's say 10 friends that are riding the, the subway. So you are surrounded or standing there in a circle, but as people start to crowd the, the, the train, the wagon, well, it's uh, basically impossible to keep in, in that circle. So rather than being around in a circle, you basically have to reduce the volume, and maybe you are face to face in, in two lines. So it's the same people, but in a different configuration, let's say, and that may happen in example for larger molecules such as proteins. So what does this uh, have in effects in terms of the food? Well, it can be very beneficial in example, it, uh, these protein modifications, the nutrient uh, content is not uh, altered, but uh, the, the space does. But these modifications allow in example to recover 100% of edible meats in oysters, lobsters, uh, other bivalves and crustaceans. It also allows to reduce the amount of salt you use for slice the daily cooked meats, uh, you add salt in order to keep the meat, meat uh, together. So with pressure, you're kind of helping these, uh, these uh, proteins come up together so you can reduce the amount of salt for a healthier and clean label product. Uh, in terms of, it can also have other effects such as, uh, an example for raw meats, you might uh, expect uh, color changes for, for raw beef. So you're exposing a part of the, of the molecules of, of the protein that uh, when it gets in touch with the oxygen, turns into a cooked-like appearance or brownish. Uh, but well, in example for when the product has already been cooked, as in sliced, uh, cooked uh, ham meats, uh, there's basically no change before and after the HPP. So we can just continue on and on in with the examples, but basically as, uh, well, it's consumers that want to judge and otherwise we wouldn't be talking here, but it's, uh, close to the closest to natural. The best is for the food to obtain directly in your kitchen. Next best thing is the HPP technology. Awesome. Well, thank you, Vinicio. I, I, that was an incredible answer. I know so many people have questions around this. I, I let you go a little longer than normal. Um, <laughs> but so I, I know you kind of already touched on the next question that, that was actually directed towards you, which was, you know, how does HPP work for seafood and aquaculture products? So that was in some of the examples that you'd already given. Are there any other uh, details you want to share on specifically seafood and aquaculture products? Yeah, and it will work best for cooked products. Uh, you can also do raw products. We just uh, had the example for the meat recovery in oysters, lobsters, uh, red fish such as salmon, in example, you might have a cooked like appearance, but in terms of the flavor of the, and the aroma, it will be basically the same. After you cook the salmon, the salmon it will also taste uh, basically the same, so there would not be any changes. And there's more potential for uh, white flesh fish, such as uh, cod, in example, since uh, the color change is not as uh, noticeable. So it's, it's better, uh, well, consumers tend to take a look at it and just judge on the looks, but when they actually taste on this and they can actually see that it's basically the same or even some properties are enhanced. And some of this is actually covered in a, our recent uh, seafood uh, blog entry. So if you can take a look, uh, you can know more about that, this application. So I know you were mentioning this earlier. So from an individual standpoint, when they're looking at the piece of meat that it can change color, so that may seem a little off, but once it goes into more at a restaurant, once you cook it, it turns back into the regular color. So they would have never known the difference. Correct. Okay, that would be one of the applications for uh, food service an example, yes. Great, thank you. So um, one more question for you, um, and, I don't, and I'm 
don't want Stacy and Donovan to go anywhere because we definitely have questions for them too. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, so Benicio, how would, you know, us here in Hawaii, we love poke, which is, um, you know, a raw kind of uh, ahi sushi, um, you know, I guess a, it's like a, it's like a dish. Uh, but I guess the question would be, you know, how would HPP application work for poke and other marinated raw seafood items? Is the amount of liquid or sauce a concern? For example, do recipes need to be adjusted for the product to be processed via HPP? Yeah, for sure. So it's uh, actually delicious. I also like to poke bowls, uh, but it also can be risky. So in, in the case of the HPP, you basically get rid of uh, parasites, uh, uh, viruses such as norovirus, pathogens, Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella. In the case of the marinated meats, it's actually better because you kind of hide a little bit these potential color changes as in the case of salmon. It can also include additional barriers to slow down and further extend the shelf life by uh, they having, uh, I don't know, ingredients that are rich in antioxidants that uh, have a little bit of salt. So all these are barriers that slow down the, the, the recovery of microorganisms. And uh, yeah, it can be, uh, as, you, as you saw in the wonderful presentation by Jorge, there's just uh, too many applications, too many ways and different dishes that you can try out with the technology and we're here to help. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, last question for Benicio. Is HPP Tech going to be able to adapt from plastic packaging towards biofilms or other environmentally friendly packaging? Sure, then uh, actually there are also some alternatives in example for PET bottles, which is a common plastic materials. There's already uh, a material called polylactic acid, which is obtained from sugar cane or corn that has uh, similar properties as in the case of the plastic and uh, that it can be used for, for the HPP. The challenge also is to make these uh, biomaterials compatible because in plastics you have one layer that gives uh, an example, the sealing property that, that melts at lower temperature. Then you have another uh, plastic barrier that is used for oxygen to, to slow down oxygen transfer. And then you have another barrier such as nylon to give a mechanical property so that it's uh, more durable. And that's the challenge in terms of, the, of these uh, new materials to, to provide these same properties that plastics uh, can do. But yeah, we shall see some of these uh, alternatives all coming in the nearby future. Well, that's really exciting. Thank you, Vinicio, for joining us today. I know it's quite late for you. Um, we do have a, 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 an all question at the end, so please please stay on with the team. But um, this question is for Senator Dela Cruz and Stacy. How far away are we from purchasing and obtaining HPP equipment for the state? Can we expect to have this kind of technology available soon? Where will it be located? Okay, so the funds are committed. So at least we know that the funds uh, are in the hands of DBED. They still have to go through their government process of self-procurement. They are working with LCC to figure out how it's going to either be managed by LCC or leased by LCC, or I'm hoping transferred to LCC. And then at that point, LCC is going to determine how they're going to, to manage the HPP machine, probably through a contract uh, because they don't necessarily have the existing staff there to be able to manage it as though it was open to the public um, for, for private use. You know, we just hope that it's, it's going to be located in, in, in Wahewa or, or Whitmore Village. We're already doing the value added product development center there. We hope to achieve a lot of synergy. Uh, this year, we're going to get groundbreaking on the value added center. So that's exciting. Um, there's going to be a curriculum for, for many people to develop their own products maybe cookies, candies, um, liquors, any kind of spirits, soaps, you name it. LCC is working really hard. They're trying to duplicate what we learned in New Zealand when we went to, when we went to their food bowls and, and saw the success of those. But long story short, we're gonna be pushing them as much as, as, as whatever it takes to kind of get, to get this money released and, and, and get the project procured. And it's and it is so great, you know, having this event tonight, getting the community knowledgeable about HPP, so we can start activating and building capacity. So when this machine does come, uh, we're going to be really ready for it, more than ready for it. So 
So thank you, Senator, for all, all of your support with this. Um, and for well, thank you. Thank you for your advocacy. So um, I'm going to go to our last question, uh, which is for all of our panelists. Um, how do you see the value added center contributing to the success of Hawaii based products and the Hawaii brand? Um, so I'll bring it back over to Ethan to get us started. Thank you, Melanie. I think value added center is, is a huge step forward for a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, a lot of us have plenty of opportunity to create an incredible product in a commercial kitchen or, or start out in our home kitchen. And what we face in scaling is this bottleneck of a facility where it is a low barrier to entry for us to come in, mess around with our recipe and actually create a product that we can at a lower cost with food safety certifications and a skilled team that can support us along the way. So the value added center is going to provide access to Hawaii grown ingredients, to processing, to machinery, to a lot of those capital intense expenditures that to be honest, a lot of entrepreneurs can't afford right from the get go and may not have a track record to be able to go out and get a loan from a bank or finance. It's really going to open up a lot of realms of innovation and access and opportunity across the food system. Well, thank you, Ethan. I couldn't agree more. Um, Lauren, let's have you go next. Yeah, so again, we're creating a new category, right? We're creating the fresh Hawaiian products category. Um, so again, for ages, we've had that crack seed and all these different things, but now we have fresh Hawaiian products. So this will allow us, again, to have Hawaiian products, which people want Hawaiian products, like I was saying earlier, and it represents Hawaii. I mean, we have the clean ocean, the clean air, people come here for those things. And we want to represent clean products along with that. So instead of, you know, again, shelf stable products, we're, we'll be able to export to the world fresh, real Hawaiian products. And I believe that's what the customers are looking for, what they want, and kind of what they expect, honestly. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, and just even being able to pilot, you know, different products and be able to test and create that lower barrier to entry, which I think yeah. will really I mean, just more innovation. Yeah, just one real quick. I mean, it would be, uh, for example, like big on coffee roasters or something. If they came out with a, uh, a cold brew coffee, now they can HPP it and export it anywhere in the U.S. I mean, how great would a, a cold brew Kona coffee be? I mean, that'd be amazing. It's a fresh Hawaiian product. That's that's something we've never had before. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next up, we'll have uh, the Hyperbar team um, if they'd like to share any thoughts. And I'll repeat the question. How do you see the value added center contributing to the success of Hawaii based products and the Hawaii brand? Any last thoughts? Yeah, well, it's definitely a very good project that is, has been proof already in some other places. And for us it's more a project that has already been proved and it's a no brainer. We know for a fact that once we start testing new products the capacity of the entrepreneurs, it's unlimited. When they have an equipment where they can create new flavors, new textures, while extending the shell life extension, every time you extend the shell life, you're thinking about that product to be somewhere else and not necessarily in your neighborhood or around you. We're thinking about the world. Operations can change when you can change the shell life of any product from six days to six weeks, it's a different, it's a totally different ball game right there. Uh, we're very proud of what you're doing. Uh, I think you're ahead of the game. Like uh, the, this doesn't happen everywhere. Even though we've done that project before, I think you got a benefit from the government, the university, and the private sector, you, I mean, you, you can be that. When you come all together, only good things can come up after this. We're ready, we wanna do it. And at the minute we got the okay, we'll be starting to manufacture that machine. We install, we train the people there, we commission the equipment. So it's nothing like you're gonna receive a big box that you don't know you don't even know how to put it together. We do the entire work. By the time we leave Hawaii, that equipment will be up and running. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that. 
And yeah, well, just to add, it's already a, a proven business model. So we also have some uh, universities, some of our clients, such as Cornell University, Nebraska University, over there, the football, Aveiro University in Portugal, in which the HPV unit is not only installed for fundamental research, but also for applied research that has helped to develop the, the local businessmen. So, so it will be good to have over there one in Hawaii. Well, it's great to see there's so many locations around the world that have had great success with HPP. Um, thank you. Thank you both for joining us this evening. All right. So last but not least, uh, we'd love to ha have uh, Senator Dela Cruz share some last thoughts. Um, well, I'm really, I'm really excited about the fact that we're going to be creating a lot more entrepreneurs, you know, um, and people are going to have access to both the value added center and the HPP machine and having that synergy both closely located. But what I'm really excited about is the fact that when we have these new entrepreneurs creating more value added products, there's gonna, they're going to increase the demand for agricultural products. Because there may be bananas, a breadfruit, sugarcane, whatever the value added product demands, we're gonna need a farmer. And having all that ag land in central Oahu with the value added center and the HPP, we're gonna see a lot of exciting things happen. And Melly, I just want to add that um, one of the things that we're most encouraged and excited about is the partnership with Leeward Community College and the State of Hawaii DOE is because we're creating pathways. Um, we want to put together a dual credit certificate um, where students can learn about entrepreneurship and use the Value Add Center as their, their classroom and really understand not just the, the science and, and all of the things that it, it takes to um, create a new product, but also understand business. And so that they're really um, getting uh, a holistic sort of perspective on what does it take to, to be a successful value add producer here in Hawaii. So um, we're really excited about our partnership with Lira Community College. Thank you, Stacey. And thank you to all of our panelists this evening. Um, I think we've definitely covered quite a bit of ground around HPP. This is just the first entree, uh, more to come and uh, looking forward to uh, having the value add center on um, the HPP and all the things everyone's mentioned around how this will impact um, and benefit our economy, our community, um, and, and, and drive entrepreneurship. So I want to thank everyone and I'm going to transfer it back over to Denise. Okay. Thanks, Millie. <clears throat> and I want to thank, um, yeah, I want to thank you for moderating our discussion tonight. And also to our panel, Hyperback, for partnering with us on tonight's episode of Eat, Think, Drink. Thank you guys for being here. I know it's like 2 o'clock in the morning over in Florida. Um, I also want to thank Donovan and Stacy. I know you guys have been working so hard on the budget, and it took an extra effort to be here. So thank you very, very much. And I want to thank Ethan and Lauren again for your time tonight. For those of you who ordered an Eat, eat and Drink takeout special from our food -go, go restaurants, Buzz's Steakhouse, Roy's, Koolina and Artisan, thank you very much because a portion of the proceeds from every order goes back to supporting our programs for farmers and the community. I also want to announce that our Food -Go, Go Restaurant Week starts next Monday, April 5th through 12th, with many participating restaurants extending their specials for a second week through April 19th. Our restaurants support our local farmers, ranchers, and fishermen, so please go out next week if you're comfortable and support your favorite restaurants. All of these restaurants have donated ex exclusive items for our Bid It to Win It for Ag Education online auction. Proceeds from the auction will benefit Hawaii Agricultural Foundation's K-12 Ag Education programs, which has served over 18,000 students since 2014. Please go out and support our local restaurants and make sure to go online to see the participating restaurants and start bidding. You can find everything on foodagogo.org. Before we end, I also want to send a big mahalo to Eggs Hawaii for supporting our event and by offering all of you here on Oahu a dozen eggs from Hawaiian made or Kalea eggs. We'll send out an email with more information on how you can collect your eggs. And it's just in time for Easter. On behalf of Hawaii Agriculture Foundation, mahalo for joining us tonight and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>